potato. Joseph Tootle versus Jordan Lindsay Balkneck. Your Honor, if I could, I'm here on behalf of my client, Mr. Joseph Tootle. We filed a complaint for absolute divorce in this matter. It's a very, very short-term marriage. The parties were just married in September of 2023. Um, and what we have, Your Honor, is, is that the, the crux of this case and really the only asset of this marriage uh, comes down to the parties prior to their marriage purchased a home. Uh, my client put down a significant down payment on the home. Well, it, the down payment was put prior to the marriage and it, the purchase was right after uh, the parties married. The property is approximately between seven and $800,000 home, has a significant mortgage on it. Um, what we're asking, Your Honor, is for exclusive possession of the home. Mrs. Botnick, again, this is a short-term marriage. Mrs. Botnick has three children from prior relationships. Um, in fact, she was uh, with child at the time of the party's marriage that is not my client's child. Um, and she has just finished another custody matter with that child's father. Um, and again, she's not contributing financially. She purchased, they purchased a, a vehicle um, that she is driving. And um, we are asking that that she and the children, and she's allowed her mother, Miss Carol Ledford, to move into the home also. So there's six people cohabitating in this home, and my client is having to pay all of the financial, meet the financial responsibility of the home. So it's our request that she be ordered to vacate the premises or in the alternative, given the fact that herself, her three children, and her mother are living there, that my client pays one sixth, and she pays five sixths of all the expenses associated with the home. The home, it, again we're going to have an issue the home has just been purchased it's very unlikely that there's significant equity um, she is not in a position it's our our claim that she's not in a position to buy my client out uh, of the home or get the home refinanced into her own name uh, but she is not contributing and she has now begun uh, having extramarital relations and uh, as a result of that, we want her out of the house. Mm -hmm. Your Honor, just briefly, um, parties were married September 4th, 2023. Um, the home that they currently reside in was purchased, um, conveyed to both of them as husband and wife. Joseph Tootle and Jordan Bocknick uh, by warranty deed executed September 26, 2023, recorded with the Register of Deeds September 29, 2023. Um, the approximate purchase price was $800,000. 20% was paid down, which is approximately $160,000. Uh, Mr. Tootle makes a significantly higher income than Ms. Bocknick. Um, with respect to the, um, her children who live there, um, Mr. Tootle was fully aware that Ms. Bocknick had children when they married, fully aware that they would be moving into the residence. And with respect to Ms. Bocknick's mother, um, he agreed that she could move into the residence. Um, our position, Your Honor, is that the house is a marital residence. Mr. Tootle has um, significantly more income than Ms. Bocknick. And we have filed in, before the court today as a motion to sell the mar marital residence, and we would Propose that upon its sale, the net proceeds be paid into court, and then we can proceed with with the divorce um, in that regard. But um, I would submit to the court there's no basis 
uh, to grant Mr. Tootle exclusive possession of the marital home. Ms. Bachnick's name is on the deed. It's a marital asset and submit that, that she's entitled to reside there uh, just as much as he is. All right. And I would call Ms. Botnick. Please. Raise your right hand, be placed under oath. State your name, please, ma'am. Jordan Lindsay Bocknick. And Ms. Bocknick, where do you work? Envision Healthcare. And what do you do for Envision Healthcare? I'm an AP specialist. And what, want to please scoot up a little bit towards that microphone sorry. so we make sure it's picking I'm up. an AP specialist. And what does that mean? Accounts payable. I work for the same company as Joseph. And what is your rate of pay? 22 an hour. You work 40 hours a week? Yes, ma'am. And you have three children by how many different men? Three. And how much child support do you get? Uh, I get child support one kid and 697. 697 for what child? One child, and I don't get child support from the other two. What what child do you get the one ninety? Sailor, the okay. baby. And who is Sailor's father? Nick Ellis. And that's your youngest child? Yes, ma'am. And you were in fact pregnant with Sailor at the time that you married? No. Or right at you had just had the child? I just had him. He was born in June and I got married in September. Okay. And what sort you and you um, have just settled a lawsuit on paternity with that with Mr. Ellis? Yes. And when was that done? February. And what are the names and ages of your other children? Twelve and ten. Twelve year old is Ryder. Ten year old is Bryson. How old are they? Ryder is twelve. And Bryson is ten. Ten. And Sailor is uh, 10 months, ten almost. Months. When did your mother move into the home? She started staying there in October. October of 2023, right after y'all married in September, is that correct? Right. And what was the reason? She was helping me with the kids, helping us with the kids. How much, how much does she pay to live there? She helps with the kids, so in return, she gets to stay there. Okay, she helps with your children. Right, that, yeah. Okay. And so you're just giving her free room and board? For helping me watch the kids. What does she do for a living? She works at Walmart. So she's capable of paying something to live there? Well, she's helping me watch the kids. In your lawsuit with Mr. Uh, Ellis, did you claim any work-related child care expenses? Yes. You did? No, child care, what are you talking child about? Child care expenses. When you, when you calculated child support, oh, did you, no. you, you didn't no. claim any work-related child care expenses? No. This was Nicholas Ellis? It is. Yes. I know Mr. Nicholas Ellis. So he, is, he grew up with my children. I don't I haven't seen him or had any contact with him in the last 20 years, probably. So I just want to make everyone aware of the fact that there is some connection. He played on a soccer team with my son and yes, daughter sir. for a while. If that creates a problem. I'll be glad to address that. We don't have, we don't have, we waive any conflict, Your Honor. <clears throat> All right. Did you admit, did you, at the point in time, did you admit to your husband that you only married him for financial security? No. You sure about that? Yes. That's your statement under oath? Yes. Did you threaten at the point in time when he told you he wanted a divorce, did you threaten to throw yourself against the wall so that you'd get an order of protection and kick him out of the house? No. You're allowing your children to eat. Have you allowed any of your minor children to operate any motor vehicle in and around the property? I let my son drive down the driveway. And he ran over shrubs and things. Is that correct? One shrub. And that's your 12-year-old or your 10-year-old? I let my 10-year-old. Your 10-year-old's driving a vehicle 
that caused some slight damage to the property. Is that correct? He drove down the driveway and ran over a shrub. Did you replace it? No, not yet. Okay. Do you allow your children to shoot arrows into the drywall of the of the no. uh, home? You didn't sit there and videotape it and laugh I at it? I videotaped my son shooting an arrow into a cardboard box. Not into the garage and damaging the property? No. Where are your children in school? Um, Ryder is in middle school. Your Honor, I want to object to relevance. I mean, we're here for a motion for exclusive possession, and we're getting into, you know, almost like we have a parenting plan. These children well, are... No, Your Honor, I, I, I apologize. It, the fact is, is financially, where are the children in school, the issue we want her to move, where the kids are going to school, whether they're homeschooled, whether they're in public school, how she's spending her money is the reason that I'm asking those questions. Unfortunately, parties, even on a short-term marriage, bring something before the court regarding financial matters. Every aspect of their life becomes fair game. Overruling objection. So where are they in school? Ryder's in middle school at Dixon Middle. Bryson is at Oakmont, and Sailor's a baby. And your mother stays home and keeps him? Yes. Okay. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, because I have to go into the office. And then otherwise you work from home? Yes. And where is the office located? In Green Hills. Do you have health insurance coverage through your employer? I did. I have dental. I used to have dental. I haven't checked on Who that. Who covers yet. your children for health insurance? The state. You make $40,000 a year, live in a $700,000 home, and your children are on ten care? Objection leading. Adverse witness. Adverse witness rule. I don't think she's been established as an adverse witness. She's answering all Ms. Roberts' questions. Uh, she called she's her on direct. She's party, so I'm going to assume or take judicial notice of the fact that an adverse party is an adverse party for purposes of the adverse party rule. Overrule. Is that correct? <clears throat> yes. It's not on, on Families First. When was the last, it, are they Are they on Families First? No. They're just on Ten Care? Right. When did you apply for Ten Care? Um, whenever I was single. Beg pardon? When I was single and not married. So it was prior to marriage that they were on it. And have you updated it? No, not yet. Did you disclose that you had the availability of, of health insurance through your employer for your children? No. You still receiving food stamps too? No. When did you stop getting food stamps? Several, several months ago. When? Um, October, November. October of November of 2023? Yes, ma'am. Was it time for you to re-up for your food stamps? Yes. And I didn't qualify. And you did not qualify, but you applied and tried to continue to get food stamps, No, correct? I did not. You did not fill out an application? No, I did not fill out an application. Have you contributed to the house payment? No. Why not? Because I'm, pay I'm paying for everything else. What, what is everything else that you're paying for? Groceries to stay in the house, and I pay for all my kids. Groceries, clothes, and I filled out a form, um, basically showing what I do pay for. Pay any of the utilities? No. Pay any insurance on the vehicle you're driving? Yes. You pay for your insurance? I pay for my insurance. And your vehicle? On what my vehicle. Of, what kind of vehicle did you are you driving? A Tahoe. 2021 Chevy Tahoe? Yes, ma'am. And how much are the payments on that? A little over a thousand. Who's making those payments? I am. When did you start making those payments? Two months ago. I've made three payments so far. So three months now. When did you purchase that vehicle? August uh, 22nd of 23. You acknowledge that the down payment on the home came from his separate funds, do you not? No, no, I'm going to object. That calls for a legal conclusion. I'm sorry? I object. That calls for a legal conclusion as to what separate funds are. I'll rephrase the question. Did you have any money before y'all, when the contract was made on this house? I had my own money. How much did you have? At the time, I, would, I don't recall how much I had. Did you pay $160,000 down on this house? I don't recall. 
You don't recall? No, I do. I didn't put money down on okay, the house. Why did you say you don't recall? Well, to your question before no. that. Objection. Asked and answered. No, I did not pay money on the house. You know that your husband had money that he put down on this house that was not your money. Right. After we were married, though, he paid money on the house. And he paid for your attorney um, for your paternity actions too, didn't he? He helped pay for my attorney with Nick. And how much was that? I don't object. That's privileged. Object on what basis? Privilege. I mean, third party may have paid it. They're married. And you're you're talking about the attorney client privilege? Yeah. I, number one, I don't think it's relevant. Um, now we're talking relevance instead of privilege. Well, <clears throat> Judge, I think what a client pays an attorney, and the third party pays it. You know, I, I understand your point, Mr. Odell. And again, we're talking economics of two people who have been married for a short period of time. You will be able to ask questions of him regarding any expenditures he's made. And my understanding is that these questions are being asked to demonstrate the financial contributions each of them have made to the household. Because one of the motions that we have before the court today is the motion uh, for exclusive possession of the marital residence. And that entails who's going to pay the mortgage for that. There's also a motion for a temporary division of marital debt, which is on the docket. So all of these issues are relevant on the issues that are before the court. So she's not required to testify about any direct conversations that she may have with her attorney. But the question of <clears throat> if there were marital funds or his separate funds that were used to pay for her attorney, then for whatever relevance, I mean, whatever weight that is, I think it is relevant on the issue before the court. Please repeat the question. Who paid for your attorney? Joe. Joseph did. Did you ask him to do that? He offered to help me out. When you got when you got sued? I didn't attorney. get sued. Did you file the paternity suit or did, did Mr. Ellis sue you? Did you sue We him? agreed upon it. I didn't get sued. He didn't file a petition against you? Yes. So you, that you got sued? Uh, okay, I didn't know that was being sued. Yes, ma'am. You got he filed a petition to establish paternity. Mr. Ellis did. Okay. Correct? Yes, ma'am. And you didn't, and you asked your husband for help in a securing counsel for that. Is that correct? He offered. Okay. Have you ever contributed anything to other than paying for your children food? Have you ever contributed anything to the mortgage, to the utilities, to the down payment on this house? or the payment of insurance or taxes on this house at all? No, ma'am. That's all. Sir, oh, you may question your client. You have a seat. Mr. O, do you want to ask your questions now or do you want to wait a little? Um, you know, I'm, I'm going to call her on the right, but then, now you can say it. Sorry. You know, I would call Mr. Toodle. Mr. Toodle, if you'll come forward. Raise your right hand, be placed under oath. <clears throat> State your name for me, please, sir. Uh, Joseph Toodle. And Mr. Toodle, you married um, Ms. Erin Botnett back in September of 2023, is that correct? That's correct. How long had you known her prior to y'all's marriage? Roughly seven years. And do y'all work at the same we uh, do. company? We do. And what is your role at the company at Envision? I'm VP of Accounting Information Systems. Were you her direct supervisor? No. And y'all y'all became acquainted through your employment, is that correct? I knew her uh, prior to employment. I helped her get the job. Okay. How, how did you know her prior to the employment? Uh, I met her at her work when she worked at Twin Peaks. At where? Twin Peaks. Um, Twin Peaks is a bar? Bar and restaurant. And restaurant. And, and we'll just leave it. Okay, this was actually better than I was expecting whenever I typed in Twin Peaks. <laughs> I was expecting something that had more poles. This just has antlers. It's like the hooters of the country. It's hooters with plaid. 
and antlers hanging from the ceiling, and some dead deer carcass heads on the wall. Never understood that. But look. Does it look familiar? Kind of? I'm not mad, but at any rate, um, it, it, you met her there and got her a job. <coughs> Did you start a romantic relationship at that point in time? I helped her get a job probably about two years ago. Uh, we kind of hung out some in between there uh, from the time of meeting till she got the job at our company. Um, and when did y'all become romantically involved? Throughout the, the time I've known her, okay. different instances. And she was having relations with other people during that time too? Correct. And leading. Correct. And you, well, the question is, Sustained, it was leading. We stretch your question. Were you, are you aware of whether or not, did y'all have an exclusive relationship? We did not. Okay. Um, at what point in time did marriage come into the picture? Um, roughly somewhere in July, okay. after she had had her job. Okay. Did you ask her to marry? Was it just a, hey, let's, let's do this? I mean, what was the... We, we decided to kind of, to date. And then as we started dating, we decided that after knowing each other for a period of time, uh, that that was the right move to make at that time, because she stated she was in love and wanted to be with me. Okay. Um, and as a result of that, where were you living at the time? In Franklin. And where was she living? In Dixon. And did she have a home? She had an apartment. And did you have a home? I did. One that you owned? Uh, no, sorry, I, I was in an apartment as well. Okay, you rented and she rented. She rented correct? and I rented, correct. Okay. And so y'all decided to get in, she professed her love and you hers, and y'all decided to get married and you start looking for a place to live. Started looking for a place prior to that. Um, somewhere in July, uh, we talked about looking for a place, so uh, we were looking prior to uh, being married. Okay. And you found a home on Yellow Creek Highway? Correct. Okay. And it's a, a very nice home. And y'all first, yes, did, did you enter into a contract prior I to? Didn't know when did you enter into a contract to purchase the property? In August, and we put down I put down earnest money in August. And how much did you put down? It's ten thousand in earnest money. Okay. And then when was the closing schedule? Uh, for September twenty sixth. And y'all married when? September fourth. And on the twenty sixth, was there a closing on that piece of property? Correct, there was. was. It placed in joint names. Yes. Um, was there money put down on the house? Roughly one hundred and sixty plus the yeah the ten thousand. And where was the source of that money? It came from my income. Um, 120 was in savings, 40 I took a loan against my 401k. Is there still a loan on the 401k? Yes. Comes out of my paycheck. Uh, How much did y'all purchase the home for? It was 760. And what is the monthly payments? Uh, 4,200. That doesn't include insurance and taxes. And that's going to pay me next. Was insurance and taxes escrowed in? It was not escrowed in. So other than when you purchased it in September, the down payment that you made, um, are you familiar with any other increases in value or any improvements to the property that's been made that would increase it significantly from what the purchase price was? There's been no improvements to the property. Did both of you sign the mortgage? I'm the only one on the mortgage. Do you know why? It was better to qualify for interest rate under my income than using both. So even and though the house is in joint names, the mortgage is only in your name? Correct. Now, shortly at, do you know how much she makes? Roughly. What is, what is that? Around 22. I knew when she got the job, it was around 21, and there's been raises since then. And how much do you make, sir? Um, around to 190. Okay. You've assisted and me. And that's, in... that's without bonus, but bonus isn't guaranteed, so. You have assisted me in filling out an income and expense statement, is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Could you pass this to you? On the officer's going to pass you one, and Your Honor, we'll mark this for ID purposes at this point in time. All right. 
Could you review that? Does that adequately and reflect what the in, what your income and your expenses are? Yes. Okay. So again, what you're looking at is you make about you gross about fourteen thousand dollars a month. Is that right? Yes. Okay. And then the expenses that are that are sped, spelled out. The rent you're forty two or the mortgage is forty two hundred dollars. Is that correct? That's correct. And how did you come up with the utilities? Are those just an average of what? That was an average of what we'd had thus far. But again, this was in January, so there's only a couple of months to, to average it. Right. So again, you've got the electricity and the gas. You have gas heat, correct? We have gas, electric, water, yes. Okay. Um, and so again, with the summer and the air conditioning things, those are likely to go up. Is that correct? Ventilating. Do you know what the I'll rephrase it. Do you, do, you under, do you think that these will be consistent or will they fluctuate? Gas will probably go down, electric will probably go up. Why have you got wife's tel telephone? Is that just at the, at the time we filed, or I filed, uh, I was paying her phone bill. Um, she used my credit card multiple times um, after I'd paid it once okay. to pay it. And then again, the rest of these are average expenses. Is that right? That's right. And the only thing on here I haven't been paying is the Tahoe. I stopped paying it in January. And that's the 1050 and that's the vehicle that's she's driving. Had you previously paid it? I've been paying it since we bought it. And when was it purchased? We purchased it in August. Right before the marriage? Right who's, before the whose marriage. Whose name is it in? It's in both of our names because uh, she couldn't qualify on her own for it. Okay. With, so, a good, with a good interest rate. Okay. And so, again, looking at that, you're, you're basically barely breaking even, even if you take away the $1,000. I was until she started paying her bills. Until she started paying her bills. Okay. Um, tell me what's led to you filing. Yarn, we'll move that in as the next exhibit. What's led to you? This is the first you? exhibit, is it not? Yes, that first one. What's led to you filing this divorce, sir? We started having issues in October, which was relatively shortly after being married. Um, she even told me that her therapist and her discovered that uh, through their therapy that she uh, wasn't really in love with me and that she um, wanted consistency and stability for her kids uh, and thought that she could love me over time. At that point in time, we talked about getting a divorce. We tried to work it out multiple times and we kind of wanted back to the same spot. Okay. So she had to go to therapy to figure out she didn't love you? Jackson leading. Sustained. Has she contributed anything financially to the, this marriage? Other than groceries for her and her kids, no. What about the, um, has she made any threats towards you? Multiple. Tell me about those. Um, we got into an argument. Uh, kind a verbal of like, argument, physical argument, what? Verbal argument, I'm not a physical person. Um, and we talked about, in that argument, divorce came up and she wanted me out of the house. She said she would throw herself against the wall and uh, call the cops, say I did it. That was one occasion. Another occasion she threatened, or she said she called the cops. Uh, so I said, I've come to the house, wait for the cops to get there, and they never came. Recently, as two weeks ago, she said that she was going to call the cops, that I'd hit her in front of her 12-year-old, um, which obviously I didn't. Um, so multiple times that's happened, okay. to the point where I had to get a camera uh, for the room I stay in to make sure that anything would be videoed to show that I'm not a physical person. And. Is she asking you to assist her with the children? There were, when the marriage was going okay, I helped take them to school, I helped buy food, I did multiple things. And have you asked her to, have there been issues where there has been damage done to the marital residence at the hands of the children? There have, and I was lied to about what had happened. Uh, cabinet door was broken. She told me she fell holding the baby, uh, and that's what broke, what broke the cabinet. Uh, come to find out, the 12-year-old told me that he broke it. Um, he didn't know that I'd been lied to about that. When I asked her about the tree in the front yard that got run over, uh, she said she was driving. Um, and then, of course, uh, you know, there's other things that have happened, but it's always implied that I'm going to pay to fix it. Mm -hmm. okay. If they've been, I, I may have misunderstood. Are they shooting bows and arrows or something? In there was, there was. He was shooting bow and arrow at the, uh, in the garage at a box. But of course, accuracy is not always 
on, so there are multiple holes from, from that. Um, another thing that kind of got me a little bit, uh, I guess, I came home one day, we were in a fight, and they were going to do a fire in the uh, fire pit that we have, uh, even though we're in the middle of a drought and a heavy windstorm. And when I said not to do it, I was told that not to talk to our kids all that day. Did they? They did not start the fire, thankfully. Did you, you care for her children. I do. Uh, the fact of finding out that there's possibly untruths that are being told and that don't want her children put in the middle of that, do you? Not at all. Do you feel safe living there in the home while she's there? I don't think she would do anything I, uh, to me physically, but I do worry that if she were to have multiple threats, that at some point the threats are going to come true for her saying that she'll call the cops and say I did something, which I would never do. And how many occasions has she threatened that? Three different. She's threatened to call the cops four times, but three of them she was trying to imply that I had done something. Okay. And have you ever been physically? physically abusive to her? No. You ever laid hands on her in any type of an aggressive or inappropriate manner? No. Her mother's living there? Correct. Is she contributing anything financially? She watches the kids and helps clean the house, but nothing financially. Was there a discussion about that prior to her moving in? I was told she was coming to visit, um, and then after she'd been there for a little bit, um, they, she basically said that she was going to stay there through the winter because it was cold. She has a pull-behind trailer that she has property on, or she has property she could put it on. Um, but there was never really a formal discussion of how long she was going to be there. But is she is she bathing and fixing her meals and yes, sleeping there? Yes. Is she contributing anything to the utilities? No. Is your wife contributing anything to the utilities or to the upkeep and the maintenance of the home? No. Um, are you capable of maintaining the home and continuing to pay for it? Yes. Um, if the court determines that she's entitled to any equity as a result of it, do you have the availability to, to buy her out of whatever the court deems would be her appropriate share? Uh, not at this time. Okay. It's, uh, all, it's all in the home. It, everything is in the home, is that correct? That's correct. My entire down payment. Okay. Is, yeah. Other than the threats and the non-contribution financially, is there any other reason why you want her and the children and her mother out? No. That's all. Thank you. Now, Mr. Edwards is going to have some questions for you. Mm -hmm. All right. So, Mr. Toodle, you've known Miss Botnick for years. Roughly seven or eight. Um, you got married September 4th, 2023. Correct. You knew she had an infant child at that time, correct? Correct. You knew she had two other children, ages 12 and 10, correct? Correct. And you knew they would be residing in the house with you and your wife, correct? Correct. You did? Yes. Correct. All right. So you didn't have a problem with that? No. And you testified that you like her kids? Yes. Now, with respect to her mother, you and Miss Bachnick had a conversation about her mother coming to live there, correct? Coming to visit. And then subsequently, you had a conversation about her mother continuing to stay there, and you agreed to it. We agreed she could stay until winter was over. Um, so it's your testimony that you and Miss Bachnick had a discussion where you agreed that her mother would just come there for a very short period of time until winter. Is that your testimony? Yeah, my testimony is that we talked about it being newlywed. I agreed to do it. It would upset my what, wife. What did you specifically agree to? When was her mother supposed to move out? They said after winter, so I'm assuming after winter is March, April. Okay, that's an assumption, isn't it? It when, is an assumption. After winter. Right. All right. You, do you like Miss Bachman's mother? I do. We get along. Okay. 
Uh, so no issue there. You agree that she helps out the children and that you like the children. Correct. I want to talk about this uh, shooting of a bow and arrow in the garage. Okay. Um, you testified that, who was it? Which child was it? It was Ryder. Okay, so Ryder sets up this box, which, was that like a little target? I'm assuming, yes. Is this kind of a toy bow and arrow? I mean, it's not like a compound bow that... It's a real, real arrow, okay, but so it was a makeshift bow that he made. Like, a, appropriate for a child? I mean, it's a stick with... I don't know what's appropriate for a child. Appropriate for a child would not be a real arrow with a live head on it, right? Okay, well, describe the arrow then. It's an arrow that you would use to hunt deer. Okay, so it's just got a normal end on it, correct? Like a small, it's like a small arrow. No, it's a real full-size arrow that you would use to hunt deer with. Not a crossbow arrow, not a toy arrow. It's okay. a real hunting arrow. Okay, so Ryder is shooting at this target, correct? Correct. And he misses and the arrow goes into the wall. Is that correct? I'm assuming based on the holes in the wall behind the target, I was not present. Okay, there are two holes. There's five. Okay, five. Describe the holes. They're the holes of an arrow. Okay. Um, so pencil on, what's the size of an arrow? Size of size, pencil size, so. size of the end of that pen, maybe? No, bigger than that. Well, how big? You just said a pencil. I'd say an arrow is what, maybe two centimeters? Well, right. you just testified like a pencil. Yeah, I'm, I'm guessing they're similar size. Okay, so is the hole about the size of a number two pencil? Roughly. Okay. I didn't measure. You would agree with me that if it's two holes or five holes, that's a pretty easy fix. It's a pretty easy fix. My concern was not the holes. My concern is the safety of doing things like that inside the house. Well, he had a box with a target on it inside the garage with a wall on the back side of it, correct? Shooting from a range of about two feet where things can, re you know, ricochet off. Can that didn't be? happen, did it? I wasn't there, so I don't know 100%. How do you know he's shooting from two feet? Because I saw it on the video. Okay. Um, so, Mr. Toodle, do you have a copy of your income and expense statement you testified to? You have it in front of you? Yes. Okay. Um, so you testified that you make gross approximately $190,000 a year. That's salary without bonus. And bonus okay. is not guaranteed, though. Okay, so you make... So this, this, is, this is based on my guaranteed income. Okay, so you make more than $190,000? Yes. Okay. On a good year. Okay, well, let's, let's talk last year. What was your bonus last year? The bonus was 40% uh, of my salary. Okay, so give me a number. Uh, Forty percent of one nine uh, one eighty at the time. So, I don't know what's that seventy thousand. So you got seventy thousand dollar bonus. So minus taxes, thirty five percent. Okay, but you said one hundred eighty thousand and seventy thousand dollar bonus. Right. That's two hundred fifty thousand dollars. But I don't get it at the end of the year. Right. Okay. It's paid quarterly, just for the record. When's the last time you didn't get a bonus? Um, well, 40% is not what you get all the time. Sometimes you get 20%. That wasn't my question. When was the last time you didn't get a bonus? I haven't had a bonus. Uh, it's been a couple of years. So you didn't get a bonus two years ago? I'm saying it's been years. Years? Yeah. Okay. Think a decade? Maybe. Okay. Mr. Toodle, every year you get a sizable bonus, don't you? You're sizable, under a... Yes. Yeah. yeah. Sizable. Yeah. So... When you say bonus is not guaranteed, that's a little misleading, isn't it? No, that's the terms of the bonus. Okay. Bonus is 40%. 40% is if we hit max terms of the company. Okay. That's not misleading. Your track record is that you've gotten bonus for years and years yes. without fail, correct? Mr. Erdl, just to tell you, I don't control my bonus. It's based on company performance. I understand you don't control it, but I'm asking you a question about I get, the historic get, bonuses yes, you've received. I get bonuses year after year. Okay. So when you fill out this income expense statement, you've got $14,191, correct? Correct. Okay. 
my math is if I multiply, the, multiply that by 12, I get $169,092. At the time, that was my salary. At what time? At the time I filed this. I've had, okay. a raise, I've had a raise since then to push me up close to 190. And that's salary. I was told to fill this out without bonus. Okay, well, last year, a minute ago, you testified that last year you made 180000 instead of 190 and a $70,000 bonus. Yeah, so I'm off a little bit on my number here. You are? Well, you're off quite a bit, aren't you? I'd say, what, I said 180, 169. You're off about $80,000. No, 80, that's bonus. I just told you under oath that. Well, you said this is based bonus, on didn't. last year, and last year you said you made 180 no, this, plus 70,000. This is based, and when I filled this out, it was based on the paycheck I was getting at that time. I haven't well, you, I've gotten a raise since then. It says April 2024. The top but that's not when I filled this out and submitted it to my attorney. I filled it out in January. So you're making 169,000 in January? Base it was, salary? It was 170, 180, somewhere in there. Well, you said, again, last year you said I made 180,000 plus 70,000 in bonus. Roughly a 250, yeah. Okay, so last year you made 180,000. And then, as we said here today, you're making 190. Roughly. At some point in between, you made 169,000? No. Well, can you explain that? I mean, I, I pulled this right off of my uh, payment. A payroll. Fair to say you make two hundred fifty thousand a year at least. Not every year. It's fair to say you made that last year. Yes. Bottom line, Mr. Tool, this this is not an accurate statement, is it? No, it, it's accurate in terms of expenses and what I pay out every month. Okay, but income's not accurate. Income's off by maybe what a couple hundred bucks. Seems like it's off more than that. I can prove. I can prove. I'm going to object to the soliloquy or the conversations that he wants to have. He wants to answer, ask a question. Your Honor, he, he's not answering the question. We he has testified that last year he made 180 thousand. He's making 190 now. His income. When I said 180, that was based on salary alone. Mr. Tootle, if you'd be quiet when we're talking, okay? So, Your Honor, he has testified that last year he made a base salary of 180 thousand plus a $70,000 bonus. He testified when Ms. Roberts was questioning him that he his base salary is $190,000 with no guaranteed bonus. He said that he filled this statement out in January and his income was accurately reflected on here at that time being $169,000. That doesn't add up. It just doesn't add up. And 180 last year, 190 now, and somehow during the meantime, it dipped down to 169 in January. And that's just my question. Restate your question. Okay, Mr. Tootle, you, did you testify earlier that last year you made 180,000 base salary approximate plus 70,000 in bonus? Yes, I said approximate. Okay, did you testify on direct questioning by Ms. Roberts that your current salary is 190000 Approximate. Plus bonus. Plus bonus. Did you testify when I asked you about this income expense statement and in particular your gross salary, your gross income, did you testify that in January the number reflected of $14,091 was accurate? Yes. Would you agree with me that $14,091 annualized is $169,092? I can't do that in my head. If you've done the calculation on it, I'm assuming you're correct. Okay. I have no problem sharing my salary. What, what's your explanation for your testimony and the discrepancy in your income at three different points in time? Well, the, again, I said approximate 180. I could go back and look at my salary to see if it matched this exactly. I've had a raise since then, so I know it's approximately 190 now. I'm not afraid to show my financial statement to you so you can look at it to see well, what you, it is. You, you sworn under oath this is your financial statement, an accurate depiction of your income and expenses. 
Your Honor, again, I'm going to object to the form of the question. There's been no financial statement that has been admitted into evidence, and there's been no proof stating that he has submitted a financial statement into evidence. It is an income and expense statement. Stained as to the characterization of an income and expense statement. <laughs> as a financial statement, it's not the same. Mr. Tittle, your income's not correct on this income and expense statement that you presented to the court, correct? I would have to do the numbers and look at my actual paycheck. All right. So, Mr. Tootle, I want to talk about the house, marital residence. Um, so, you all closed on that house on September 26, 2023. Would you agree with me on that? Yes. And I just want to uh, provide you a copy asking to identify. Judge, we stipulate and agree, and it's been testified that the part, that the home is in joint names. Judge, I'm then asked the warranty deed to be just next exhibit. All right, make a warranty deed exhibit two. So, when you all got married, September fourth, you you knew what Miss your wife's income was, correct? Yes. Um. She'd been fully transparent with you about the money she made. There's one item that was not transparent, and that was she got income, income from her dad uh, passing away. She told me it was roughly $700 a month that she was getting, which she now states she no longer gets. Okay. So but yes, I knew. Outside of that, I didn't know child support. I know that one child, uh, uh, Bryson, was getting child support of roughly $700 a month um, from uh, but there was problems with it being paid. Okay. Well, you knew that you made s substantially more money than she did, correct? Correct. So you all bought this house in September of 2023, correct? Correct. And you knew when you bought it that you were the one that had the ability to pay the debt, correct? Yeah, I, I do not. Uh, I've planned on paying for yeah. house and bills, but not her bills. Okay, I'm talking about the mortgage payment, all yeah. right? Yeah. Okay, when you and she bought it, and you all put her name on the deed because you wanted to jointly own the house, right? That was the intention. The reason we put her on the house because we were being married, and I thought that it was going to be something that would last. Okay. You made that decision. Yes. You wanted her name to be on the deed with you. You wanted to own this property together, correct? Correct. And this seven to eight hundred thousand dollar house that you bought you knew that it was being bought because you had the ability to pay for it correct correct and i thought you weren't that... relying upon this yeah and again if we could finish his answer before mr odell starts questioning him again please let him answer the question fully before you begin answering Quite yeah. asking the next question yeah the reason i put her on there i thought that my money for the down payment would be considered a separated party going into it and coming out of it only to learn that it's it's not obviously okay so you you agree that 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 house is a marital asset correct yeah i think and that's... the equity in it is yeah again Fair. calling for a legal conclusion as mr odell has pointed out earlier and i would object for asking my client to draw a legal conclusion i'm sorry repeat that objection calling for a legal conclusion same objection that mr odell made so I overruled over his objection. I overruled. I thought I overruled his objection. <clears throat> State your question one more time, please. Did, uh, Mr. Tittle, you agree that the equity in the house, the house, that's a marital asset, correct? If there is equity, I, was... I think that does call for a legal conclusion <clears throat> because there was a difference between that question and the question that was asked uh, by Ms. Roberts. You're asking him if it's a marital asset. And that is a legal term that the court has to determine what the marital assets are. Um, 
if there was equity in the in the property that came, I think the question Ms. Roberts asked was, is the equity or the 160,000, whatever was paid down on the house, did that come from his separate funds? And that was the question she asked that you objected to as a legal conclusion. It was not a legal conclusion in this court's opinion to, do, to ask someone if the down payment came from separate funds of that person. The, you're asking him if it's a marital asset, which is a legal term used by the court in determining what are the marital and separate assets. That's the reason I'm sustaining and why I, why I see a difference in the two. Mr. Tittle, do you agree that you and your house, you and your wife own this house that you live in currently together? She's on the title, yes. Okay. You all equally own it. I mean, I guess by the title, yes, but we, there's no equal to it. talk to you so you said your wife's threatened you yes multiple times since the divorce was filed uh once was prior uh back in <laughs> roughly late october early november i had to go get a hotel room for two nights to let things cool down at the advice of my friend who's an attorney uh then there was another time um in somewhere in november where we um were disagreeing on potentially what the divorce would do. Then there was a time uh, just two weeks ago uh, in front of her 12 year old. Okay. This divorce filed January 26, 2024, correct? Right. Okay. You and your wife had sex since then? Uh, once. Okay. So you weren't too scared of her, were you? Like I said, I was sex with her. Like I said, I'm not scared of her. What I was scared of is I'm afraid that she would say that something happened, but nothing did happen. And the reason is because I think she's using that to try and get a temporary restraining order to get me out of the house. But she had sex with her. Since she filed the divorce, she had sex with her. Yes, one time. Witness, Your Honor. Mr. Tittle, was your wife's birthday yesterday? It was. What did you do for your wife's birthday? You what? What did you do for your wife's birthday? I got her flowers, a cake, and a card. You got her an elaborate flower arrangement, didn't you? It wasn't that expensive, no. It looked pretty nice. It's nice, but doesn't mean it was expensive. So you got a nice flower arrangement. Did you give her that card? I did. Can you look at the card, please? Can you read the card? Not, not your inscription on it. I'd like for you to read the card from the beginning to the end. Ways you're like coffee. You're awfully hot. You're nice to hold. You get my insides warming. You pick me up. You smell good, too. You're mildly habit-forming. Uh, you're just right. I wouldn't change a single thing about you. Uh, and most of all, I wouldn't want to face a day without you. Happy birthday. What did you, okay, that's what the card said. What was your inscription? What did you handwrite? I said, I know things haven't been the best. I do love you, and you deserve the best. All right. All right. Make that card next exhibit.
So that card reflected quite a bit of flattery toward your wife, didn't it? I got the card because she likes coffee and I thought it was funny. Do I love her? Yes, I do love her because I do care about her. Am I in love? It's different. You love her, you say she threatens you, and you want her kicked out of the house. Gave her a card yesterday that was very flattering. Were those lies? No, I do love her. That's all questions I have. Mr. Tootle, how do you get paid? I uh, get paid bi-weekly. How do you get paid by your bonuses? Uh, quarterly, based on company performance. So you get a separate check quarterly? Yes. And do you know how much that is before you get it? No. And have you had a quarterly payment for 2024 yet? No. You get a paycheck stuff, you get a pay guaranteed paycheck, correct? Yes. And is that right. what that income and expense statement was reflective of? Yes. Is that your guaranteed income to pay your monthly to pay monthly expenses in the end? Yes. And is that why it's filled out that way? Yes. Okay. And again, I'm happy to share it. On are they on a fiscal year or on a calendar year? Your uh, we're, calendar. We're calendar, January okay. to December. So again, after after the end of March, that that end of the quarter, they'll calculate, and then you'll get a. Payment in May. In May. Right. For and the March for the March quarter. Right. And I just confirmed I didn't get anything in uh, for December that quarter because our company went through bankruptcy. Uh, and as a retention measure, they paid bonuses out early, which was paid sometime in March. I mean sorry, May of last year, which was part of the money I used for the down payment. So May of twenty twenty three you received a bonus. I received a bonus. And that was the last bonus you received from your company. That's correct until I get paid one again in May. And, and if, if the company meets its requirements and does that? That's correct. But you, but, and then that was the money you used as a down payment. That's correct. Okay. I, what, so, and again, did you receive anything for December? I have not received anything for December. Do you anticipate receiving anything for the fiscal, for the calendar year, any more money for the calendar year of 2023? Nothing for 2023. I was prepaid for it. I believe that's all. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Where do you sleep? I sleep upstairs. Where do you sleep? Downstairs in her room or in the <clears> master <throat> bedroom. What do you want to do with this house? Uh, my intention would be to keep it. You you want to keep the house? I would like to keep it. And. <clears throat> If I know what your concerns are about her remaining in the house, let's say that there's an order down of the court that restricts your conduct and her conduct towards each other in the house. Is there any way you would feel safe in living in the house with her? Yeah, my safety is not a question. I feel safe. Well, the false charges, I guess, would be the thing. Yeah, I feel better now that I have a camera in there to make sure nothing happens. All right. Anybody else have anything? No, Your Honor. No, Your Honor. Thank you. You can step down. Thank you. We'll take our noon recess for lunch until one uh, thirty. All right, <clears throat> Ms. Uh, Roberts, you're you still putting on your proof? Um, that well, I, th I think we can. I concluded mine, and right. I, I concluded his, and oh, I already right. called you, her. You you have the right to call your client now, or whatever proof you want to put on. Your Honor, I just called Ms. Bachman. Right. And Judge, I notified Ms. Abby to take that matter off the docket. Thank you. You've been previously sworn, just remind you that you remain under oath. Okay? Ms. Bachman, I just handed you an income and expense statement. Um, do you recall signing that statement? Yes. Okay. Um, I'm going to briefly recover some of the things that you testified to earlier, but where are you currently employed? Envision Healthcare. Okay, and I believe you testified that your rate of pay is $22 an hour. Yes. Is, um, 
your gross monthly income before tax uh, reflected on the income and in income and expense statement three thousand nine hundred twelve dollars and forty six cents. Yes. Okay, and that's monthly, correct? Yes. Um, and your federal tax and other taxes are five hundred eighty nine dollars and thirty eight cents. Yes. Okay. Um, <clears throat> You have your monthly expenses listed below. Can you go through and explain to the court what those monthly expenses are? So I pay my car payment of 1034 my cell phone, my gas. Do you want me to list the amounts too? Yeah, are that, well, yes. Just, oh, okay. And then cell phone, I pay 450 My fuel, gas for my car is 320 and my car insurance is, is four sixty eight, and food and groceries a month for us is twelve hundred, roughly, and um, laundry cleaning supplies is uh, about three fifty, and cleaning personal care four hundred, and entertainment is about four eighty nine, and my four hundred one k is one seventeen thirty seven. Okay, I want to go through each one of those. Okay, your car payment is on the. Uh, SUV and, and what what is that vehicle? Tahoe. Okay. And you have a copy that you'd like for me to look I'm at? I'm sorry, Judge. Obviously, it's a lot more difficult for me to follow along with what's being said if I'm not looking at it. <clears throat> You gonna take a picture of it? I phone? am, Judge. I'm a, I'm a copy short. Just let the clerk run it. Can't we just run a photocopy of what? I can run him a copy. Okay. 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 You can go ahead and ask, but obviously we'll run a photocopy and give you back the original. I thought I had an extra copy, three copies. Just for future reference, it's always beneficial if you're asking a witness about a document <clears throat> that you're going through a lot of detail on. It's always helpful to give the judge a copy of it so that I can understand it because listening to it and when you two are going over it, it kind of flies over my head. So, my apologies, Judge. I'm Sorry, um, Miss Bachnick. I'm just going to move on to something else, and then come back to that. Um, okay, so you and your husband married in September. Yes. Okay. Um, following the marriage, uh, was a house purchased. Right. And have you continued, you've continued to reside there until the present day. Yes. Are you and your husband living there together? Yes. Um, if the court denies the motion for exclusive possession that's been filed by your husband and puts parameters in place um, relative to you and your husband continuing to, to cohabitate there, um, will you abide by all such? Yes, I can respect that, okay. what he needs. Okay. Um, Ms. Bachnick, going back to the income expense statement, um, the car payment, which was number one, see that? Yes. Okay. Sorry. It's $1,034.27. Okay. That is a payment on what vehicle? The Chevy Tahoe. Okay. Do you primarily drive that vehicle? I'm the only one that drives that vehicle primarily, okay. yes. Who are the title owners to that vehicle? Uh, me and Jody. Okay. And who is obligated on the indebtedness owed and secured by the vehicle? Jody. Okay. Um, how long have you been been making that payment? I'm uh, the past three months. So I've made three payments total. Okay. So moving forward, are you willing to timely make that payment? Yes. Um, the second line item is a cell phone. Right. Can you explain what the what that comprises? Um, my two kids have cell phones, and then Sailor has an iPad, and then my cell phones. So that's why it's kind of pricey. Okay. And have you historically made those cell phone payments, or has your husband? We off and on. Sometimes I need help. Okay. So this he, he pre has previous paid time them? he has paid it. Okay. Are you willing moving forward? to continue making that payment yourself yes. and to be solely responsible for it. Yes. Okay. Um, what is the next line item? Automobile fuel? Right. And that's to, I have to drive to Green Hills and so it racks up the gas a little bit more. And um, so that's for the month. Is that for work? For work, yes. Okay. 
Tuesdays and Thursdays. Now the automobile insurance, um, is that for the Tahoe? Right, just for the Tahoe. Um, have you historically been making that payment? Um, he's helped me, but um, yes, I am now. Okay. Um, are you willing to continue making that payment yeah. timely moving yeah. into the future? Yes. Um, food and groceries, can you describe what that is? Um, I make dinner every night. I don't eat out ever, and so that's for the whole month. Um, and that is, does that include uh, the food that you purchase for your three children? Right, and my mom, I feed her too. Um, uh, remaining four items, have you historically paid those yourself? Yes, I have. Right. Now, in addition to your income that you earn through your employment, um, what other monthly income do you receive? Is reflected in that footnote at the bottom. Um, I get child support for Sailor and Bryson, and so Bryson's is irregular. And then Sailor, I get uh, six eighty-seven a month from Nick. Okay, and then, now let me stop you there. The the um, child support for Bryson, you right. said it's what do you mean it's irregular? So it changes because his dad changes jobs quite a bit, and it's garnished out of his wages in Texas. So every time he switches a job and he doesn't report his new job, um, the child support stops. So he switches qu quite a bit, se several times a, month, a year. And so that's why it's so okay. not consistent. Then the final item in the footnote um, you've identified as renewal income is 599.40 reduces monthly. Can you describe what that is? So my dad sold insurance when he was alive and when he passed away I get an income from that sort of like a retirement and so monthly I get an income from that but it's reduces every month as people pass away because it was a renewal income so it goes away slowly so um, it used to be 800 then it went to it just slowly decreases so at a certain point it'll be be gone okay so was your Sorry. dad an insurance agent? He was. Okay. And did he have a book of policies? Right. Insurance policies. And do those insurance policies expire or move into move to other agents over time? And is that what causes it to reduce? No. Um, it's policies on people. So um, if he had a life insurance policy on someone and they pass away, then the policy's done. But every month they pay into that policy, he gets a percentage of that money from that policy that he sold someone. Okay. How, so over the past 30 years that he worked there. Okay. How quickly is that monthly income reduce reducing? Um, what I, rate? It, in the two years, it's went from 800 to 599. So in that time period, it's gone down significantly. Okay. Um, Are you asking the court to permit you to continue staying and residing in the house? Right. My kids go to school in the same area where, where they're zoned and they need consistent consistency. So yes, I am. Okay. And you filed a motion asking that the marital residence be sold. Is that right. correct? And are you asking that the marital residence be sold and proceeds paid into court for the court to determine down the road how to divide it? Right. So, Ms. Bocknick, um, your, your three children that live with you, um, you heard testimony about the arrows being shot, um, and you heard your husband's testimony that the, the target was missed in the garage and it created a, a hole the size of a number two pencil. The pencil tip, okay. right. It was actually... So I was going to buy putty because at first I thought it was a huge hole that he was talking about. 
And when I went to go buy putty, I saw that the hole was barely the size of a finger, like a pencil tip. And I was like, it's not even worth um, covering because it's barely noticeable. Okay. Did you just discipline the children? Oh, yeah, I did. And um, Ryder got his bone taken away and his guitar. This guitar's prized possession, so he got in trouble. That's all I have, Your Honor. Robert? Miss Botnick, why is it that you want the house sold? Well, uh, Jody mentioned that as well because... I didn't ask what he did. I asked, why do you want it sold? Your Honor, my client can answer the question. I, I agree. I don't think she's asking the question. She's answering the question. She's saying that he wanted it sold, too. But the question is, why does she want it sold? So, right. Your Honor. Um, because that was a house we were married in and I just if I'm leaving then we both move on I want the house sold but just in revenge no definitely not revenge I'm not um, vindictive like that okay well you've you put this income and expense statement for whatever the truth of it is that no, I'm you, don't have, you don't have <laughs> Staying on the sidebar comments, don't make sidebar comments. You're stating that you only have $3,912 a month to support you, your three kids, and, and your mother. Right. And you're going to sell a home that you've not contributed to whatsoever, correct? Right. And you're going to have, have that listed for sale, so there's going to be a sales commission that's going to be paid on it, correct? Correct. And then you're going to have capital gains tax on any income that you derive from that, correct? Did you know that? Okay. Correct. And so you do, so again. Capital gains tax is the tax that you pay when you sell a high value item. And it's based upon the amount of profit you make on the sale of that item. So taking the original purchase price and subtracting that from the sale price. In this case, well, in, in the case of capital gains in general, there's an exception for primary residences. The catch is, is that you have to live there for a minimum of two years before you can even look at getting that exemption. Since they've only lived there a year, there's no way that that's going to apply to them. So they're going to get taxed on this. Because they've owned the home for less than a year, it's going to go under the short-term capital gains tax, which means that they're only going to get taxed on it at the rate of their actual income. So whatever your income tax rate is. And because of what his income is, depending on how much the house sells for, what the profit is, he could be taxed anywhere from 32 up to 37%, which is going to hurt for him. She probably would be a lot less than that. The good thing is, is that Tennessee has no state capital gains tax on top of the federal capital gains tax, like most States do, as you can see from this chart. Now, or if he were to keep the house for a minimum of two years before he sells it, then he would be able to deduct $250,000 of the profit of the sale, not the sale price, but the profit between the difference between the sale price and the original purchase price and not pay tax on that. And that's if he's single. If he's married, then it goes up to 500000 So it's in his best interest to keep it and live there for another year, year and a half before he sells it. It's certainly not for financial gain that you think you're going to sell the house, is it? Well, I, the divorce is going to end us. We're not going to be together anymore, and I want a fresh start. He will want a fresh start, and I want the house sold. Because you want the money, right? Not necessarily, no. Now, in your income and expense statement, you use $3,912.46 is what your income is. But again, you're making $22 an hour. Right. So that's $45,000 and some change a year, correct? $45,760 a year. Yes. So you divide that out, and I divided by 52 weeks, and that's $3,813. Okay. Where did you, and do you make any overtime or anything else? No, we're not allowed okay. overtime. But this income that you've got up here, this monthly income before taxes, does not include the 687, the 780, or the 599, 
which is an additional $2,066. Isn't that correct? Um, if that's what you have on there. Well, you don't have it on there. I added it up. But if you look down at the bottom, monthly in monthly court order child support, six eighty seven. And also, um, it's not consistent. I mentioned why. You didn't put that. On, that doesn't. That's not included in this number, is it? Is it not? Is it or is it not? This is what you've introduced as your income, ma'am. It's not introduced. Okay. Because it's not consistent. Because he doesn't have a job half the time. His father. Well, see, I asked you when I called you on direct examination, I asked you what child support you get, and you know what your testimony was? Yes, and I told you. No, you just said I only get it for for, for Sailor. You get 687 right. You right. didn't mention that you got it for Bryson. Because I hardly get it. Well, when and, was the last time you got it? Uh, last last mm, month. No. I was. Let me finish, please. Um, I got it probably back in October of 2023. And I can show proof of that. Have you instituted any cases against him to try oh, to collect the money? Well, it's kind of pointless because it's already garnished out of his wages, and it would cost me money that I don't really have to fight him. And so you would instead let the somebody who's not the father of your child support you and provide a home for you than to go get money from the person who's supposed to be supporting that child. Well, he he does work sometimes and when he does I do get money for Bryson so and I'm doing what I can make sure he has everything he needs you're doing what you can right for my kids have you gotten another job no I have a baby, a baby. okay well does I that don't. preclude you from having to support your children I don't think I would have time to have another job when I work 40 hours a week you just work 40 hours a week and your mother is you're providing a, a roof for your mother on somebody else's dime she helps, she helps a lot with the children so that's saving me on having to get child care your 10 year old has a cell phone yes everyone in his grade has one so we have to keep up with the joneses because everybody in his grade has one. Who well, does he, he rides who the does bus. He, call? he games on it and stuff like that. That's what all the kids do these days. But who's paying the internet so that he can log on to it out there at Yell Creek? I am. You're paying the internet? On the phone. On the phone? I'm paying the cell phone. Okay, he doesn't click on and get on and not use his cellular data? I could use Hotspot if I need to. Who pays for the Hotspot? Me. I pay for my cell phone. Where, okay, so that's what you're doing. If I need to. Well, I didn't ask what you needed to. I asked what you were doing. So right now, he when he's not home, he he runs off the service. Mm -hmm. I don't even know if he's even connected to the wireless internet half mm -hmm. the time. He's 10. Now, you go to Green Hills twice a week is what your testimony is? Sometimes I go in Tuesdays and Thursdays, and some it, she changes it up. But most of the time, it's Tuesdays and Thursdays. No, I didn't ask what most of the time. You testified when I put you on the witness stand first that you go, you have to go to Green Hills twice a week. Right. That's not true, is it? Unless the weather's bad or if it's snowing. No, I don't go if it's snowing. And you don't. And go this past week, I didn't go on Tuesday because of the storms. So it does change sometimes. So when I subpoena your work records and your that they're ahead. going to tell you you were at the office two times every week, go every ahead. week since the beginning of this year. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. That's the truth. Unless there's bad weather or if something is going on with the kids or if something's going on. Well, how many times has something gone on? Quite a bit. The weather, it's just, it was winter. Now... I want to, I've got some black and white pictures, but I want to, I, sh, I didn't print them in color, and I'm going to come to you and show you these if the court will allow. Just give me a little shot. watching the video you you videoed yourself and you saw your son shoot, right so he was the holes into the 
into the uh, drywall or the it's the insulation, isn't it? I haven't seen the You may approach and watch what's being shown. I can't even see it. You can't see that because it's so time. Oh, now I can't see the screen. So that's right. That's zoomed in. I will give you some black and white photographs here that we're going to make as you can see it. And these are zoomed in. Yes, I, I'm not, not disputed. These are, these are. Right. And they're so tiny, it's hard to. I could putty them, but they're so tiny. Yeah. No. And he had to do that. So if it was a huge issue, why wouldn't he do it? Well, why would he be? Why would he be? He has pride in the house. Well, why, why would you not? Because it was so tiny. Again, looking at just these color photographs, those are the black and white ones we've done. As we scroll down, there's multiple holes shot into the insulation, and this is insulation that's on the garage door. And in the drywall, in the in the living in the in the garage, right? Right. Okay. Your Honor, we'll move this series of pictures. Is that income? Is her income? Is that going to be? I didn't. Is that going to be exhibit? If he made an exhibit, I didn't. Did you make? Did I'd ask him if he made an exhibit. I don't think I did. Okay. So this this income is going to be number four, and those pictures will be number. Sure. Now I will show you another, and I can pull the, the color one up, the black and white photograph. Right, did, color. Did you did you lie to your husband and tell him that you were driving the truck and ran over the? Right. Yes, I did. What my what kids. vehicle was was your ten year old driving? My truck. It, the Tahoe. The Tahoe that, that your husband is the one solely financed with. I am too. I'm Wait, on there just as much as he is. Well, you said his name was just on the note. No, we are both on there. Okay. Up on that note. He's a co-signer. So you're letting your 10-year-old drive a 2021 Tahoe to the point where he ran over a shrubbery that was there. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And you lied about it. I lied to protect my child, which any mother would do if they're scared that their, their kid will get in trouble by someone. Well, because your son was driving a 10 did, well, did he know that, out of here. Did he know that, your that you had allowed your 10-year-old to drive a Vehicle. That no, is I a, it was me that did it. So we've established that let's, you. Let's, let's establish a ground rule. <clears throat> Only one of you talk at once at a time. Of I'm course, sorry. Uh, Hornick over in front of me has to take down every word that's being said, and when there's conversation going on at the same time, it makes her job extremely difficult. So do you just wait for her to finish her question, and she will let you answer. And if she doesn't, I'll stop her. But you make sure that she answers. She asks you the question. Wait. And then you answer it, please. Yes, sir. So we've established that you're not above line. Your Honor, I'm going to. Is that correct? Check. That's argumentative. Well, the court is, again, the court is the one who has to try this case. Whether that is argumentative or not really has no bearing on me. It, is, it has been established that she lied to her husband about who was driving the car. That fact is. Proven so. The uh, question itself is not evidence, as we always tell the jury. So I take it with a grain of salt. So, in addition, you sent your husband a text message and stated that you had fallen with the child and broke a cabinet. Right. And that was also a falsehood, isn't that it? That was also the same tactic of being protecting my children because. And that's why I just said it was still a falsehood, correct? I guess if you want to spin it that way. You lied. To Jody. Because your son, yes. one of your sons. Broke and I did that out of protection to make sure he didn't get on to them. Okay. The judge has already instructed for you to wait till I finish asking okay, my question. I'm sorry. The judge has already instructed that you wait till you finish, and I finish asking the question, and I will wait for your response. Can you do that? Yes, ma'am. You lied to your husband when which one of your sons ripped off or, or tore a door off of this cabinet. Okay, so what happened was um, they broke it and it was just hanging there, so I finished and took it off. Did you unscrew it? No, I just kind of took it off. Okay. Causing damage to the hardware and to the wood, correct? Yes. 
Did you ever take the time out and putty it and put it back up? No, ma'am. Why not? Because I didn't know how. If I did know how to do something like that, I would have fixed many things in the house that need to be done. Just like you didn't take the time to go buy putty and putty the holes that your son knocked in the wall. Correct? Yes. If I could judge, I'm going to make a photograph. Oh. And again, I apologize, these are black and white. This is the this is the tree that he ran over, correct? We'll make that an exhibit. Number six. And then this is the, the color photos I've showed you on my computer. That's the text message as well as the damage that he that was done, correct? Right. And we'll move that as the next cumulative exhibit. Number seven. I was, sorry, I was just trying to help you. No, I, I, that's what I keep it moved on me. I'm going to show you a, a video. So this is your new baby, right? And you, that you hold him in your lap. Right. And this is your oldest child? Right. Doing what we were complaining about and shooting holes and this is the photograph here shows the garage door right with the insulation on it and that's where he was shooting into that no it was in front of it in front of it no like the box was like right here the wall is right here and the garage is like right here so he was doing it towards this direction the garage was not in the path of the bow and arrow then how did the how did this all get damaged well the weather model i was taking a video Let's get back. So you two occasions that you just admitted that you've lied about. Now have you you are also communicating with another gentleman now, aren't you? I have a friend that I text, but I'm not I mean, a male friend. Yes. That you are anticipating and, and romantically texting, correct? Oh, and he lives in Chattanooga, so that I mean, that's be... where he lived. Okay, well, no, we don't talk like that. You he don't talk support about... a friend because I'm going through this and I need a friend, and I don't have a lot of girlfriends that I really care. So I'm reaching out to him as a. Um... Well, I'm not. I'm not trying to to question you because we're going to subpoena your text records from him. And I'm asking you right now, we've already established that you embellish or tell falsehoods. And I'm asking you right now to create a record because we have a court reporter. They are not romantic in nature. Is that correct? Yes or no? We, we don't really talk like that over text message, though. Not, not. I, I guess I just don't look at it that way. Not what y'all are going to do when your divorce is over. You can't wait to see him. I've kind of been talking more about my feelings. Okay. Okay. Just understand that, that you're under oath and there's a penalty of perjury if you testify falsely. You understand that? Right. And so you are not romantically involved with anybody? I have. I did sleep with him. But we don't talk about it. <laughs> You understand, I called you as a witness first, and I asked you if you were seeing anybody, didn't I? I'm not seeing him. He lives in Chattanooga. Oh, you just, you just having sex with him? I had sex with him twice. Twice? Oh, I did sleep with him. Now I have slept with him multiple times. It. He lives in Chattanooga. I slept with him twice. Where? And two times in a hotel. 
Where? Like one time in a hotel, one time in a hotel. Where? The first time was um, Nashville, the second time was in Murfreesboro. Who paid for it? You did. So you're looking for somebody else to start taking care of you? No, I don't want him. We don't even really talk now because I thought I was going to work it out with my husband. I well, you lied to him. To. He asked you if you were dating anybody. You know what you told him? If you were seeing somebody. I'm not seeing anybody. You just having sex with somebody. I had sex with him twice. Did he act? Did he ask you if you were seeing somebody or having a relationship with somebody? He did, and I and you lied, didn't you? Seen someone. You lied, didn't you, Dart? I'd ask that my client be given the opportunity to answer the questions Ms. Roberts poses. I apologize. Trying to answer the questions. Please allow me to answer the questions. You lied to your husband about having sex with he someone. He didn't ask if I had sex with someone. He didn't ask if you had sex. What did he ask you? If I was seeing anyone, and I'm not. And you're not. You just was having sex with somebody. I did twice, and I'm being honest about that. Well, where were your kids when you were shacking up with this man while you're married? Well, at one time, um, my mom was watching them. Okay. And the other time, oh, my mom was watching them both times, actually. Did you advise her and tell her that you were going to meet another man? No. She, would oh, she, wouldn't, she wouldn't have condoned that, would she? No. She would have been quite angry. Who is this man? He loves Jody. What's his name? Will. What's his name? Will. What's his name? Please I, give I his full name. I don't care about his last name. I'm just trying to find out who is he a co worker or just somebody she Oh, know? no, it, it's not a co worker. I met him on Instagram years ago and I met it with him twice. He lives in Chattanooga. I just thought and I, I missed it. Well, and, and, and I would like again. his name. I would like his name. Will Hansen. Will what? Will Hansen. Hansen? With the H. Hanson. 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 I'm sorry. I don't have my hearing aids in. And when were these liaisons? The exact dates, I don't. I'd have to. Um... This has gone on a while. Really I, she's admitted to, the, to um, having, it's... A, having an affair. We're here on division of debt and possession of the house. With respect to the division of debt, marital fault is not a factor. I'll, I'll move on, Judge. The only other question I was going to ask is who paid for the gas and whose car did you use to drive to meet Ask that question and that'll be the last one. He paid for everything. He gave you gas money? Yes. Cash. How much did he give you? $80. So he, so this man you met on Instagram gave you eighty dollars to meet him in a hotel room in Murfreesboro and in Nashville no, to have sex. He didn't give no, me. I don't want to object. That assumes facts, not in evidence. She's implying something totally different. And what am I implying? Yeah, I think you're implying she, she gave him met with him for money. Pardon. I, it, the way I took the question was that uh, she I'm was saying Miss Roberts is implying that she is having sex with this man for money. I think. She's implying that she was asking whether she had expended marital funds to meet her paramour, and uh, <clears throat> that was the question that was put forth, and she testified that the gentleman gave her uh, money for gas and so forth. I, don't, I didn't take it that it was in any implication of anything. It, is there any other times that somebody's given you any other money that you've not disclosed on your income and expense statement? So that you, you first you only told stories because you were covering for your kids. Then you told a story about having um, about having relations with another man while you're still married. And it's and you also told a story about the fact of threatening to call the police and have Mr. Toodle kicked out of the house. And you 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 te you have said that, haven't you? Right. I did not say that. You did. You're sure. I'm 100% sure. You understand we've had that. There, there, there could be surveillance. Totally fine. Don't, you don't want to recant that right now. No. All right. Thank you, ma'am. No. You have every opportunity before this hearing is over with to recant that statement. Are you, again, testifying that you never made a threat to him to call the police and have him thrown out of the house? The one about me throwing myself against the wall, I did not say that. Okay. Well, what did you say? Which time when I threatened it? Well, I, obviously, there's more than one threat. Because he is kind of a bully, 
And mm. yes, I will threaten to call the cops on you if you threaten me. Okay. You need him. I don't, if you can threaten me all you want to, but I, when I, did you threaten him to call the police on him and have him thrown out of the house? When did you do it? I didn't call. I didn't ask if you called. I said, when did you make that threat? I did it several times. It was um, when he mentioned it too, um, back for December and um, then between January and March. I don't know the exact dates. I mean, just last week you did it, didn't you? Because he's being rude to me. He said, I can't wait till you're out of this house. Wait till a judge sees this. I'm going to make sure you're gone. You and your kids will be out on the street. Okay. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to call the cops on you if you keep threatening me. So telling you you're rude and he pulls you out of the house, is, you're going to call the police. That's, I told him to stop and he did. That's all. Ms. Pocknick, you heard um, Ms. Roberts asked you why you wanted the property sold, correct? Um, during your husband's testimony, did you hear him testify that he he couldn't afford to buy you out of your part of the house? Right. He couldn't access further funds? Um, so are you asking the house be sold? Your Honor, again, so, I'm going to object to leading. No, I, that's not leading. I said, are you asking? To, I, I wasn't leading. able to finish my question, but... I withdraw the objection. Objection withdrawn. Are you asking the house be sold and net proceeds be paid in court to be divided equally between the two of you? Yes. Bachman, there's been no domestic violence in your house, or has there been? Verbally. Okay. Explain that to the court. He can be a bully sometimes, and he will keep threatening that I'll have to leave the house and just makes me and my kids walk on eggshells. And so that's why I said that about the cabinet and the tree, because I was scared if he's like, well, you keep destroying the stuff in the house, that you're just going to have to move out and leave, and we have nowhere to go. And so I basically... You and your husband, this is, is this a large house? It's a little about over 3,000, so it's not too big. Okay. So can you and your husband cohabitate in this house and right. not have we, much interaction? Right. We have a bonus room upstairs that he has been staying up there. And we seem to coexist pretty well, considering. No more questions, John. You don't have anywhere to go if I help. What are you going to do if the house sells? You understand the question? She's asking if, if you don't have any place to go, where are you going to go when the house sells? Obviously. I might have to get help from my sister. Okay. So you have the availability to do that? No, I'll have to reach out if that's the case. She lives in Texas. I have no family in Tennessee besides my mom. But of course, until you were caught on cross-examination about telling numerous lies, you never raised one issue or told anything about some verbal abuse, did you? That's why it was brought up about me having to threaten to call the police. Why did you have sex with this man after the divorce was started to be such an abusive person? Well, same instance, he had sex with me. Well, I asked that question. It was that too, one of those you're nights. On the stand now. We were both drinking and no, I it just, object. It's my husband. It's outside the scope. Uh, and I do still love him. Hold on just a second. Objections outside the scope of Voodoo sustained. I think we've heard all we need to about that. So. But you also told you, you didn't tell him about your paramour because you wanted to try to save your marriage. That's what you just testified to. That's all. Thank you, you may step down. Well, you may call your next witness. No further witnesses. Proof. No further proof, John. Do you have your rebuttal proof? 
Yes, Your Honor, just briefly. Go ahead. I call my client back. Well, I'll remind you you're under oath. Have you ever been verbally abusive? No. We call each other names, but that's it. What was the question? I'm sorry. Have you ever been verbally abusive to your to your wife? We've called each other names. She's what she said about being out of the house. I did say that just because I thought that's what was going to happen. That's all. Thank you. Do we have any questions? I have just a moment. While you're thinking about your question, go ahead. So, Mr. Tittle, have you ever called your wife any derogatory names? I have. For children? No, but she did say when I asked her how would she pay for her vehicle when this is all over, she said she'll spread her legs like she always has done before. She would what? She said she would spread her legs like she's always done before. You called her a cunt? That was back in October, yes. So a month after you got married, you're calling your wife derogatory names. Asked and answered. That was after she had called me a troll. Objection. Objection. Answered. Asked and answered. Objection is sustained. Um, so, Mr. Tootle, you make a lot of money, right? I do okay. Yeah. You do a little more than okay. We, we established that a little bit earlier. Objection outside the scope of redirect. Well, actually, you called him as a rebuttal witness, so this is not I redirect. Mean, well, as outside the scope of... I don't think it applies. When you recall him as a rebuttal witness, this is open cross-examination. Mr. Overruled. Tootle, as much as you want to avoid truthfully testifying as to what your income is, you make a lot more money than your wife. I, I, can, I can answer that. So the uh, 14000 that you have on there, it's because I took one paycheck and I doubled it. I didn't consider that we have 26 paychecks because we're bi-weekly. So if you add that together, then it gets to 182. So that's why that was that way. When I was given that income sheet, I took one paycheck because I don't know what the taxes are because I don't think of it in gross. I think of it in net. So that's why that number was 14000 So a rounding error that doesn't include an $80,000 bonus. That's because this year I haven't gotten the bonus. You've gotten it for the past 10 years at least is what you testified to, correct? I know, but I was told to put down guaranteed income. You're trying to, re you're really trying to avoid this question, aren't you? I'm tr answering it truthfully. If I was guaranteed to get 80000 I'd put it down. All right. You make a lot of money. Ask and answered. Your Honor, I'm just trying to get to my point that I was about to get to earlier. You've asked him that question now three times, sustained. Okay. You like to use the fact that you make a lot more money than your wife as a threat against her and her children, don't you? No. I you, pay for everything. Well, how's that a threat? You like That's to fact. threaten to make her homeless, don't you? No. I don't know, because I don't know her true financial situation. I figure she, her mom has property, they have a trailer. She has a place to go. But you've told her that you're gonna make sure that she's kicked out of that house. I didn't say I was gonna make sure of that. I said, you will probably be out of the house. I didn't say I'm gonna make sure. There's nothing within my power to do that. That's why we're in this court today. You, you, you threatened her that you and your three kids are gonna be out of this house. I did not say you and your three kids will be out of this house. I said, it'll be up to the judge. That's all. <clears throat> you knew her for seven years before you married her, right? I did. All right. You helped her get a job. I did. And you knew she was carrying another man's child when you married her, right? Uh, she already had the baby up when we oh, got her. had the baby. So Correct. she had three children by three different men, and you knew all of that before you married her. I did. So you kind of knew what you were getting into, or at least you suspected you knew. I kind of figured 
it was a 50 50 whether it was going to work out so <laughs> stupid i know most men when they get married they don't think about 50 50 chance of it working out when they uh you know ask someone to marry them <laughs> I wanted to Although, believe. Although I will say that with the divorce rate in this country, that's probably not far from far from the average of what marriages work out and what don't. <clears throat> but my question of this is: you expected there would be problems, I assume. Yeah, I, I wanted to believe what she was telling me. She was past going out and partying, and she was ready to be a family and settle down, and she was looking and for you, stability. Karen and Thorne, so, you wanted to help her. And obviously, for eight years, there's something there. You know, I, I was fed the whole. Nine yards. The point is, is that you went into this knowing that there could be problems, right? I did. And it turned out there are problems. Within a couple of weeks, I figured out there was problems. <clears throat> but you say you still love her. I do, but I don't think I have the same kind of love that I had before. It's right. more, I care about her. All right, that's all. Step down. Thank you. That's our proof, Your Honor. There's an old saying, oh, what a tangled web we weave when first we practice to deceive. <clears throat> Y'all have heard that before. It applies to everybody in this case. I think Mr. Uh, Tootle deceived himself when he thought that he was going to be able to marry this lady and fix her problems and that they would live happily ever after. Although he admits today he thought maybe he only had a 50-50 chance of success in doing so. <clears throat> um, of course, Ms. Faulkneck uh, has testified that, she, or at least there was testimony that, I don't think she testified about it, but it was testimony that she didn't realize that she didn't really love him until her therapist, I think it was, that told her she didn't really love him. And if she went out and had sex with two other men during the marriage, obviously that would be something that she didn't marry. She did love him. So I, I'm, this is a, a situation that is a temporary hearing that is designed to keep the parties and life and limb together until such time as if they can conclude this matter after discovery and after mediation takes place. They are both asking for a divorce. <clears throat> so therefore, as was pointed out, whether Ms. Balknick um, wants to move out of the house or not, right now, that's coming. I mean, you're gonna have to do it sooner or later. Mr. Mr. Uh, Tootle has indicated that he cares for her children and his concern is that she may make some false allegation against him while they are continuing to live together. And, so it's going to take time for her to move out. <clears throat> the uh, Dixon County school system concludes its school year on what, May 23rd, I think it is? Yes, sir. And uh, it is this court's opinion that these parties will continue to cohabit in the marital residence until June 1st. At that point, Ms. Uh, Balknick will, be, will vacate the property. Mr. Tootle will continue to own, to have temporary possession of the marital residence. I make that uh, statement because of the fact that it is not, it is apparent that Mrs. Uh, Balknick cannot afford to pay the house payments and therefore would, if uh, he is forced to leave, he's gonna still have to make the house payments. She uh, has indicated that she wants to sell the house, which obviously indicates she would then have to leave. In the interim period uh, that they reside together, <clears throat> She will pay all payments that she has on her income and expense statement. I have added, she's showing a shortage of her uh, income and expenses that she's negative $1,505.56. If you add back in the child support payments and her renewable income, then that comes to $5,978.46. So it's clearly more than her expenses are, even considering those expenses, which when I look at, um, no, and I don't mean this to be harsh, but I don't spend $489 on recreation and entertainment a month. Um, clothing and personal care, $400 a month. Folks, you're going through a divorce. You're going to have to tighten up uh, a lot of these expenses that are otherwise 
you might do if you're living in a nice home and having two incomes that total over $200,000 a year, this is not gonna be the case. Short-term marriages, short-term marriages that go through divorce, the court's usually looking to put the parties back in the situation they were in prior to the marriage. It's just that simple. Uh, Short-term marriages of six months do not typically uh, require or even justify the awarding of alimony or spousal support um, absent some compelling circumstances. So I'm just saying these expenses that are here are going to have to be looked at. Her car payment of $1,034.27 is fixed. It's going to have to be paid. She's got cell phones for a 10-year-old. So be it. She'll have to pay for it. Her um, automobile insurance is, goes with her car. Her food and groceries of $1,200 a month. Um, she's only going to be required to provide food and groceries for her and her children. He will have to provide food for himself. Um, laundry and cleaning doesn't seem to be particularly outrageous, but the $400 for clothing and personal care and $489 recreational entertainment may be an area that, that Ms. Balknick has to kind of reduce. Mr. Uh, Toodle will be required to pay those in expenses that are shown on his income and expense statement. Right now, he's paying the house mortgage. <clears throat> he wants to keep the house. The issue of any credit that he is to receive for making the, t the payments on a temporary basis, any increase in the equity that might result from that will be reserved for the final hearing. In this case, he's providing right now for the next two months at least a place for her and the children to reside until June 1st. Um, and that, in my opinion, would justify that. I've taken away the $300 phone bill that she's now going to be required to pay which means he'll have some small amount, but I also think he's got a greater amount than what's shown on here because there's some flexibility in his income. In any event, he'll pay the monthly mortgages on the house and all of those other bills that he has paid with the exception of the Chevrolet Tahoe, which she is gonna be required to pay. And <clears throat> with that being the case, I will put down this further order. These parties are both restrained and prohibited from involving law enforcement in any way, shape, form, or fashion against one another to gain an advantage in this divorce action or to seek to have the other removed from the home. A violation of this order will be contempt of court. I'm just simply saying that I'm not saying you would do that, but I'm saying there's been some allegation that you were gonna call the police. There's some reason he might, but I'm simply saying you can't do that under this order. And as a result of that, uh, if something happens and it turns out that somebody violates that order, they're looking at 10 days in jail for, for even doing that, uh, making that type of report. If there is any indication of violence in the home, you must come to this court, file an application for an order of protection with the Chancery Court of Dixon County, Tennessee. So you will have that protection. And if you, if you feel threatened or you have that, you have the right to apply to this court for an order of protection. They will present it to me personally for me to review since I'm the one who's hearing this case and I'll determine whether or not there is a need for an order of protection and then probably would have to set a hearing even if I denied it. So <clears throat> both of these parties are restrained and prohibited from arguing, fussing, fighting, uh, speaking negatively to each other, cursing each other, certain words that are just uh, not acceptable. And you've uttered one of those in, re in regards to your wife. Whether you agree with what kind of a life she's lived in the past or what kind of a behavior she's exhibited, she is your wife. She deserves more respect just for that fact alone. And he deserves being your husband to have a little bit more respect than, the, than uh, what you've shown him. So treat each other with respect in this time you live together. Either of you has the right to vacate the home upon your decision to do so. You can move out and let her have the house pending that. Uh, she can move out if she doesn't like living there with you, but you're gonna cohabit it peacefully. There will be no fussing, fighting, cursing, or anything else. You'll reside in the upstairs bedroom. She'll reside downstairs. <clears throat> there will be no damage inflicted on this house by anyone associated with that. So both sides are prohibited from destroying, damaging, or whatever. You are prohibited from allowing your 10 year old to drive the car, uh, at least at this point, just don't let him drive the car. 
Um, don't let him shoot holes in the wall with a bow and arrow or whatever uh, it was that was there. Just be no damage to the to the to the residents. Um, absent an agreement otherwise, I'm going to order that there be an appraisal conducted on the value of this house to determine. I know that wasn't necessarily requested, but it I goes with the question of selling. Let's find out what the house is worth. It may be worth considerably more, in which case you may have a lot of equity that you may be entitled to. It may be have lost in the uh, downturn of the economic market that real estate has suffered recently. It may be worth less. So as a result of that, we're going to order that the parties agree upon, unless you have some... Uh, Chris Chatham. I was just about to utter those words. Chris Chatham would be the person who usually does the appraisals in this area. Do you have any objection to that? Chris Chatham will be authorized to perform an evaluation of the house. <clears throat> and then the issue of reserving, will reserve the issue of selling the house. If there is substantial equity that Mrs. Balknick would be in, entitled to, then it may be necessary to sell it. Mr. Tootle, you have exhausted all of your equity. But the court will reserve the issue of your contribution of separate monies and the determination of how any equity in the home is to be divided. So obviously, if there's no equity above the contribution, separate contributions, then it may make sense to award it to him. And he's simply eats whatever the loss is of his equity. But otherwise, that's uh, the order of the court. Um, Mrs. Uh, Bachneck's mother and is going to continue to reside there to help her with the children. There's, I don't want any questions right about that. You seem to like her and get along with her. Uh, if you two will treat each other with kindness and uh, you know be sociable and, and civil to one another, then you can coexist until the time for this to be resolved. And hopefully by the end of, of May and the first part of June, you all will have been able to determine some of these issues and maybe you can resolve this and go separately and start your life over again. It seems like that's probably where both of you are headed. So sometimes the uh, fantasy we have about how great things are going to be just doesn't work out. And that's, I think, where we are right now. So I think both of you are looking to gain something out of this situation. And unfortunately, it's not going to work out for you. So we're going to end your divorce. I noticed that they've it's been pending now for um, less than 90 days. Uh, but it's been pending more than that for you to talk about whether or not you want to go ahead and finalize the divorce itself. So if you want to talk to your client if she wants to go ahead and be divorced, I can pronounce the magic words today and grant you a divorce. If you want to think about it, then do so, and you can let me know. We would prefer that, Your Honor, so that any rights of inheritance. I'm going to do it unless both sides, uh, since it wasn't requested, and it's not a final hearing, the only way I'll do it is if both sides desire to have that, have the marriage terminated. The advantage to it is, is that it fixes the date of the marriage so that we know what the contributions are to each other. But it may be that Mr. Odell and his client don't want to do that. You all talk about it. You can always let me know before today is over Thank what you. you want to do. All right. Thank That's you, Mr. Roberts will draw the order yes, and submit it to Mr. Odell for his approval. Okay. Thank you.